So in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to simplify a radical expression using three different techniques. Using prime factorization, applying the product rule, as well as using the power rule. Now this is gonna be very helpful once we get into more complicated problems where we need to simplify the radical. Understanding these techniques to simplify our radical expressions is really gonna help us out. And no matter what technique you like the best, it's really gonna depend on what you're comfortable with as well as the time that you have to be able to do that. So we're gonna work through these different techniques with using three different radical expressions. Now I am multiplying these expressions, so I am going to overall simplify this whole expression, but I wanna look into each radical individually and use a different technique. And I think the easiest way to understand simplifying a radical expression is to first look at the prime factorization. So if you remember, when we were writing down prime factorization, if you remember from like numbers, we would take a number and we'd rewrite it as a product of its prime numbers, right? The building block of that number. And obviously the larger the number got, the bigger our factor tree was. Now we can write a number as a product of its primes, as well as we can write a variable expression as a product of its prime variables. So if I was gonna do that for this expression, what I would do is I'd say, all right, how can I rewrite you know, four as a product of its primes, which would be two times two. And then I can do the same thing with x to the fourth as x times x times x times x, right? So now this is what we call the building block of this expression, right? This is a product of all of its primes. Now, when we're trying to take the square root of this, to understand the square root, we're saying, you know, what values, what numbers or terms multiply by themselves, right, is what we're trying to look for for the square root. The way we like to look at this, or an easy way to kind of visualize this, is we can take the square root of our, our pairs, so two times two x times x, and x times x. Now, another way that we could use our rules of radicals is we could break this up into two times two times the square root of x times x times the square root of x times x. So if you don't want to use the grouping worm, you could also break it up as square root of pairs. And then the square root of two times two is just gonna be two. The square root of x times x is x, and the square root of x times x is x. And we can simplify that to two x squared. Now, that was a lot of work. Hopefully it kind of makes a little bit of sense of what you're doing because you could use the same technique for each and every one of these problems. But hopefully, as you see, as the numbers get bigger, the more writing you're going to be doing. But I always like to remind students, if you get stuck or you get confused, go back to the basics of what you understand to simplify your radicals. So for the next week, we're gonna look at the product rule. And if you remember the product rule for exponents, if you have two exponents, x to the a times x to the b, then that's equal to the sum of x to the a plus b. And that's exactly what we're gonna be trying to do is we're gonna try to rewrite this expression using the product rule. Now, I don't wanna write the prime factorization of 81. That just kinda of seems like a lot. However, I'm not really sure of what raised to the third power is gonna equal 81. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here is think, all right, how can I maybe rewrite this knowing something I do know, right? I do know that 81 is nine squared. But again, if I'm looking at the cube root, because here's the square root, right? We could write two. I need to write this as a set of three numbers. And nine squared would be nine times nine, which is a pair. So it's not gonna work for the cube root. So let's maybe look at some of the cube numbers that we are familiar with. So I could do two cubed, which is two times two times two. Well, that's gonna equal eight. You could look at three cubed, which is three times three times three, which is 27. And then we could also look at maybe four cubed. So four cubed equals four times four times four, which equals 64. Now out of these numbers, if obviously I go to five, that's gonna be larger than 81. Out of these numbers, do any of these evenly divide into 81? And you could say, well, guess what? Yeah, 27 does, right? Now, rather than writing this as 27 times three, so I'm gonna rewrite this as three cubed, and then how many times does 27 go into three? Well, that's gonna be three times. Then I can do the same thing with x to the 10th. Rather than trying to write x as x times x times x times x 10 different times, I wanna rewrite this as x to the cubed. So again, if I rewrite this as x cubed times x cubed times x cubed times x. Now again, I'm putting a one up here because I want you to see what's happening. What's happening is I'm using the power rule. I'm sorry, the product rule. If I wanted to simplify these, three to the third times three to the first would be three to the add the powers, three to the fourth. And three to the fourth is gonna give me an 81. A x cubed times x cubed times x cubed times x cubed gives me three x to the three plus three plus three plus one, which is 10. Now the power and the beauty in this is when we're looking at this, I can break this up kind of like I did down here. So I have the cube root of three cubed times the cube root 
of 3 times the cube root of x cubed times the cube root of x cubed times the cube root of x cubed times the cube root of x. Now, you don't really need to write all of this out, but I want you to see what's happening here because the cube root of something cubed is just going to be our number. Right? The cube root of 3 cubed, or 3 cubed, yes, 3. Then I have the cube root of 3. That's going to remain under the radical. The cube root of x cubed is going to be x. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of x cubed is x. And the cube root of just x is going to be the cube root of x. So I can simplify this now. I'll rewrite x times x times x times 3, which is going to give me a 3. x squared, the cube root of 3 times x, which is 3x. So that would be the product rule. So what you want to do is rewrite them as powers. And the power that you want to rewrite them as is going to be the same as your index. That is going to be the trick and technique you're going to want to look for. The last rule is going to be using our power rule. And the power rule is very similar to the product rule. But what's helpful about the power rule is if I have x to the m raised to the n, right? then we just multiply the powers. So what we're going to want to do in this scenario, I'm going to want to rewrite these expressions raised where n my highest power is going to be the same as my index. So I'm going to see, you know, can I rewrite a number raised to the fourth power to give me 32? Kind of like the same thing I did with this 81. Now, fortunately, for 32, again, I can think about this and I say, well, what do we know about our, you know, numbers to the fourth power? Let's just start with something basic, right? Let's do 2 to the fourth power. So 2 to the fourth power would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times 2 is going to be a 16. So I can go ahead and rewrite this. Now, you might be thinking, well, how am I going to rewrite this 2 to the 4th raised to the 16th power? OK, so what I did there was a boo-boo. And this needs to be a 16. Because my point was not to really do the power rule for this. We want the fourth root of 2 to the 4th here to be 16. All right, But what I want to look at is this x to the 12th using this power rule. So what I can do here is I can rewrite this as a fourth root of 2 to the fourth power, right, which is going to give me my 16. But the main important thing is rather than writing this as like x squared times x squared times x squared or x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth, right? Because our goal is for this power to be the same as 4. I don't want to write this as x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth. But what I'm going to want to do is rewrite this as x cubed to the fourth power. You can see how little work I need to do to be able to rewrite this, right? Because think about it. x to the third raised to the fourth is going to give me 12. Right? Now, if I had a little bit extra, I could always use the product rule to add you know, an extra x or anything. This is important because when we have our indexes 4, we want to make sure we have an expression raised to the fourth power. Because when we do that, that's how we're going to simplify our radical. So this case is going to be the fourth root of 2 to the fourth power times the fourth root of x cubed to the fourth. Now, we can go ahead and break this down. And then this is going to give me a 2. And this will give me a times a x cubed. Now, I can bring this down to my next level, which is going to be a times a 2x cubed. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm simply just going to be working into rewriting this down. The only thing we need to be careful on is do not multiply terms or expressions outside of a radicand inside the radical. So all we're going to do is everything else is fair game. So I have a 2 times 3 times 2, which is going to be a 12 x squared times x squared times x to the cubed. Remember, using the product, product rule, you're going to add the powers. So 2 plus 4 is going to be x to the seventh. And then on the end side, we have our radical, a cube root of 3x, which could not be simplified any further. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify a radical expression using prime factorization, using the product rule, as well as last but not least, looking into the power. You can see the amount of work that a lot of times it takes